when you go to an eye exam, th the thing that I believe you should encounter is a lot of questions about school. Uh, if you are working with a kid, you need to be asking questions about what can they do well, what can't they do well. Um, I have the philosophy of I ask the kid. You know, I don't say, what are you bad at? But knowing their favorite subject, their least favorite subject, what they do on their free time. You know, are they a kid who will pick up a book and read? Or are they a kid who's going to go outside and play? Not that one is bad and the other is good, but it's really nice to know, are they well-rounded? Or do they really have a passion? If nothing else, I can talk about Legos for the entire exam and get way further than if I didn't. So the types of questions that we ask our patients, they, they kind of sound fantastical at times, but, but they're there. And so we ask about double vision. The weirdest one I think for parents are words floating, moving, and swimming on the page. Because as a parent, if you have a kid come up to you and say, I don't want to read because the words are floating on the page, the, the, the kind of tendency is to think they're, they're trying to get out of this. But there are vision conditions that truly make the words look like they're 3D when they're not, and they'll actually make them move on the page. And so you can kind of imagine when we get those errors where they're mismatching the words, it's because they're actually in motion, then that's what they see. And then the last one is blurry vision. And this is probably the number one sigh of relief for parents, believe it or not, because they go to the eye doctor and they say, my kids complained about blurry vision for the last year. And the eye doctor says, everything's fine. They read 2020. But what they don't look at is, is it blurry all the time or just sometimes? And for some people, looking at a book makes things blurry. For other people, looking between like a book and the television at home and switching their distance can actually make things blurry. So there are different types of blurry vision and the 2020 eye chart doesn't really address all of them. It's not that they're gonna complain about their eyes, but they're gonna complain about headaches. They're gonna rub their eyes. They're going to actually cover or close an eye. A lot of these, these kids are kind of labeled as squirmy because they're always trying to change their perspective. So they'll be up and they'll be down. You tell them to sit there and read, and two minutes later they'll be standing over the book or they'll have it three inches from their eye or three feet from their eye. And so what they're trying to do is tell you that my eyes don't work the way that you want me to two feet away from a book at a table. And so I'm trying everything I can using one eye, using two, using my whole body to try to figure out how to make things comfortable. So, and then the third thing that we ask about is kind of what is their perception? And I think the, the reason that I titled this, you, you know your child is smart, but why the struggles is because if you have a low achieving child who achieves low, they're happy. But if you have a high achieving child who achieves low in one specific area, they get frustrated, if that makes any sense at all. So you have these smart kids who say, this should be easier, I should be better, but it's this one little sticking point that creates a lot of frustration, and I think it creates a lot of tension with, uh, with parents, because all of a sudden you kind of put off reading and then all of a sudden it's like this big emotional event when it really should just be they're picking up the book and reading. So we talk about concentration, we talk about having the ability to remember what you've read, and a lot of the things that pop up, are they losing their place or are they rereading uh, the same line of text? So when you look at the research in binocular vision dysfunction or eye teaming deficits, the number one complaint isn't double vision, it's not blurry vision, it's losing their place. Because when you put a system in motion, it's going to fall apart. And so the types of patients we're talking about right now are people, like you said earlier, the eyes didn't work as a team. So the analogy that I use is what happens if you put one leg on one treadmill, the other leg on another treadmill, and you set them to different speeds? You're not going to be very good at running. And so if you have one eye on one page and the other on another, and you ask them to read, and you put that system in motion, they're going to stumble. And so that's why that dynamic activity of reading is really where this comes down to. Because the vision things we're going to talk about today, they affect math, they affect sports, <laughs> they affect a lot of things throughout life. But reading and that really specific dynamic activity is where it seems to, pe to pop up the most.